Hello, and welcome to the Notary Business Talk, the podcast dedicated to sharing ideas, strategies, and techniques to help grow your business and improve your life. And now, with more than two decades of notary business experience, your host, Abraham Zamora, the notary entrepreneur. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Notary Business Talk. My name is Abraham Zamora, and I am the Notary Entrepreneur. In this episode, we are going to discuss how to set realistic goals for notary success. And as usual, as most of you know, every month I have Ronnie Mickle on the show joining us for a special segment where we chit chat about these ideas that are going to help you grow and succeed and just flourish in your notary business. This is why we're here. Combined, we have more than 30 years of experience. And we just love sharing our knowledge with you guys. As many of you know, Ronnie is the owner of Unlimited Inc. Notary, which is a signing service company that services title and escrow offices nationwide. And he's also the founder of Notary Stars, a premier training and educational platform for notaries who are trying to improve and level up their business game. Ronnie, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I love doing this every month with you. It's the best. It's the best. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and I, just, you know, let's, let's catch up a little bit. I know I haven't uh, recorded a few shows in a few weeks, so I'd like to kind of figure out uh, how have you been? I mean, how's, how's your month of November been? How was your Thanksgiving? How's, how was that? Well, uh, I actually got my first vacation in three years prior to Thanksgiving, okay. um, which went really well. One of my best friends from Atlanta, Georgia flew over to see me. And we, you know, traveled and we went to all the hot spots in Arizona. I stayed local, but we went up to Sedona and uh, the Grand Canyon. So it was my pleasure to show one more person the Grand Canyon before they died. And <laughs> uh, for Thanksgiving, I actually worked. So I'm actually on 14 days of not taking any days off right now. Um, but that's because, you know, when you work with a team, you get your vacation and then they get their vacations. We don't force anybody to take their vacations, but a lot of people between now and New Year's want to take time off. So I took my vacation. They let me have my peace. And then I gave them their vacations and let them have their peace. So it's, you know, it's an even trade. Hopefully by January, we'll be back to normal where everybody's underworked or, or rested and overworked at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's part of what we do as entrepreneurs, but, uh, but we love it. Don't we, Ronnie? And it's, uh, it's uh, it's part of uh, it's part of our life, and uh, we choose it, we enjoy it, and uh, that's why we're here. I'll tell you guys, uh, this month has been very exciting. One of the benefits of having the market slow down, if if you prepared properly, is you have a little extra time sometimes to do some fun stuff. And so, uh, uh, you guys know that this year I got married, but earlier this year, uh, my daughter and I went on a daughter daddy trip to uh, Mexico, a place called Guanajuato, Mexico. And uh, if any of you have seen that movie Coco, uh, with that the Day of the Dead film, this this little town is where that movie was based uh, from. So Pixar Animation Studios actually went down to this town. They toured the city, and they used this city as inspiration for the for the film. So in Mexico, particularly, it's become sort of the the hub of 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 Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos, and. I got to tell you guys, it was packed. We were there uh, November 1st and 2nd, which is when Mexicans celebrate essentially our version of Halloween. And man, it was such a good time. We went out there. Uh, one of the craziest things I noticed is, is the food is so cheap. I mean, we literally ate uh, a five course dinner for like a third of the price that we would pay out here. And uh which was very strange to, to so next year we're all meeting you <laughs> we're all meeting you there so you can you can show us where all about it right it was great i mean i'll tell you something it was a good time and uh yeah absolutely i would definitely go back there again very colonial i mean some of these buildings are like two three hundred year old spanish buildings so very historical so that was really cool and it was again just my daughter and i we just pick up because my daughter I, I don't know if you know this ronnie i think you know this but some of the listeners know i homeschool my daughter so we can just pick up and take off. And again, the freedom, right? The freedom that this business can give you if if you structure it right, if you plan for it appropriately. Um, one of the things, it might not always be easy and it might not always be simple, 
but it definitely gives you the opportunity to have that flexibility of time. And so we did that. Uh, but yes, Ronnie, any Ronnie, any time you want to go, man, let's go. Uh, I'll take you to TJ. Where, where do you want to go, man? <laughs> You know, honestly, my next vacation, we'll look into it. We should, we should take a vacation together and, and go visit and show me something that I don't know. I love going new places. Okay. Uh, you know, I need to learn to get away a little bit more often. So if somebody sends me an invite, uh, maybe I'll take them up on it in the new year. My new year, new year's resolution is to actually try to work a little bit less. Um, one thing I want to comment on Abraham, as you said, you love, you know, the flexibility of this and I talk about work, 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 work. And yes, I'm very fortunate as a signing agency and a training company to have all the business that we have. Right. But one of the things that I do miss is about seven and a half years ago, mm -hmm. I was a top signing agent. And before I decided I wanted to become a signing agency, because you give up a lot in order to cross that threshold. And I remember I could bang them out, you know, from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. And the rest of the day was mine. And that was golden. And I could choose if I wanted to work in the evenings. And I only worked in the evenings if no one I knew had something that they needed to do in the evening. So I would go to dinners with people, lunches, you know, it was amazing. It was a great time in my life. And I do miss that often. You know, I've crossed too far into owning a signing agency now to go back. But I do miss those days. So you are right. There is a lot of perks to being in our industry. Um, and so I just wanted to comment on that as well, because I do remember those days and it's what gave me the drive to kind of get to where I'm at now. Uh, but there is a lot of flexibility in this industry and it's, it's a beautiful thing, actually. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that, that, that flexibility is one of the biggest reasons why I think a lot of people are attracted to what we do and, uh, uh, but yeah, I do. I do have one question though. Are, are you a foodie, Ronnie? Because I, that's that's important. Um, there's a reason why I only film myself from here up because <laughs> from here down, you can definitely tell I'm a foodie. <laughs> and we're gonna get along just fine. <laughs> well, and that's the other thing. For Thanksgiving, I was uh, nominated to uh, cook Thanksgiving dinner, and we had already had two Thanksgiving dinners with turkey and stuffing, so we all decided we're going to do something different this year, and so I, I chose Mediterranean food, and I cooked Mediterranean dinner for 25 people, and that was nerve-wracking, but uh, it turned out pretty well, so that was that was fun for Thanksgiving. So I love food, so anytime you want to eat, you just let me know. <laughs> we got to do it, Ronnie. We really got to schedule something, but hey, guys, let's get into the, the topic of this show, which is setting realistic goals to help you grow and achieve the success that you're trying to achieve in the business. Now, we know a lot of things have changed in the industry. Uh, you know, rates have changed. They've gone up. Work has slowed down. And so there's definitely a, a vibe and almost, a, for some people, like a sense of panic, possibly, depending on kind of where you're at right now. And so I think it's valuable that we talk about this idea of setting goals because one, we're heading into the end of the year and this is typically the year you would want to do it, but more so this year than other years, because, you know, and again, it depends when you got into the industry. If you started two years ago, you haven't really had time to even think or breathe. If, if you've been at all active in this industry, because you guys, we've been so dang busy. We've had this, this, this COVID boom that we call uh, but now it's different. And now what seems like it's slowed down, Ronnie has said this before in the past, it's, it's kind of going back to what it was, you know, prior to, to COVID. And, and this is mm, getting closer to normal than, than, than it's been in the last two years. And so doing the kind of stuff that we're going to talk about in this show is important because we want to make sure that we are preparing ourselves and, and really taking this opportunity that's that it's slow and that it, and the things have calmed down a little bit to really reassess our business and find out what we did right, what we did wrong, where we're at now and where we want to be into the future. And so uh, before we get into actually setting goals and and making plans, I think it's important to really establish what I call planning questions. And uh, there's three of them that I usually ask myself anytime I'm setting up a, a, a goal, right? And and I'm, I'm referring to short-term goals. I, I like setting six to maybe eight-week goals. It's how I function. It's how I like to sort of track my progress uh, each step of the way. 
And so you might be different. You know, you might like weekly goals or annual goals or, or every, quarterly goals. That is really up to you and how you want to structure uh, goal setting. But before you can even do any of that, I think, and, I, and I'll have you obviously chime in, Ronnie, with, with what I have to say here. But I think the questions we need to ask ourselves is, number one, where are you now? Take inventory of your current situation. And, you know, I, I hate to say it this way, but there are really two types of notaries right now. If we we're going to gener generally categorize the kind of notaries that are in the industry. And I, I, if, if I was to categor uh, categorize them, I would say there are confident notaries and there are fearful notaries right now. Confident would be a notary who has the experience that, say, Ron, someone like Ronnie and I have, where we've been through this before. We know what it looks like. We were anticipating the cycle to change, as it always has, and we were prepared. Uh, prepared either financially, because we saved money, prepared emotionally, prepared mentally. Uh, like I mentioned before, you know, when it slows down, I've been doing this for over 20 years. This is when I take these vacations, right, and hang out and do fun stuff. So for me, it's actually been quite an enjoyable process. And I'm very confident that things will pick up again. Now, when? I don't know. I, I can't predict the future. Ronnie, can you predict the future? Adam, can, can we I say can't predict the future, but Travis is uh, going to be starting a blog in January where okay. we're helping notaries kind of forecast for the next three months. It'll be coming out and we'll be including it on this if you let me as well where we're going to be kind of help forecasting because uh, Travis tracks, you know, for unlimited ink, kind of how things are going to look in the next quarter. Um, so we will be incorporating that, but it is hard to predict uh, what the future is going to hold. We've always said real estate is feast or famine, uh, but I want you to continue on with those two types of notaries because I do want to chime in on that as well. Got Yeah. So, you know, we can't predict when things will turn around, but what I can say as a confident notary is that it will turn around either because simple supply and demand demand economics there are in the last few years there was way more notary uh, way more signings than there were notaries there was a uh, supply issue there weren't enough uh notaries right there was higher demand less supply of notaries now it's sort of reversed and just like the free market typically corrects itself as demand drops supply will adjust there are some notaries I know for a fact that are no longer going to be in the industry. I know personally notaries who have told me that they're going to quit doing this. I mean, I, I, I can't understand why a lot of notaries would do that. Some aren't. But the confident notary knows it will turn around like it always has in the past. The real estate industry is not going to go away. And notaries have been around for over 2,000 years. We're not going to go away. The fearful notary is sort of the opposite. Someone, and this is typically someone that's a little newer, maybe didn't save up the way they were going to save up. And my rule, by the way, uh, Ronnie, and yours might be a little different, but my rule for an entrepreneur is to have nine to 12 months of savings and exp uh, expenses in savings. Uh, I've been asked, when should I quit my job and go full-time as a notary? If you ask me, nine to 12 months of expenses in your savings account. Now you may, someone else who's listening to the show, even Ronnie might disagree, but that would be my metric, my sort of rule for, and, and if you decided to do that right now, you're probably not as worried as someone who doesn't have money saved or someone who doesn't have the experience who's new to this and is realizing, man, I can't believe it's just stopped like all of a sudden. And now, you know, what's going to happen? Is it ever going to come back? Should I go back to a job? Do I have enough time to you know, weather the storm? And so it's either one or the other at this point. And so I think it's important to recognize where are you? Are you in a position of strength, confidence? Are you feeling good about the industry and, and, your, and your experience and your abilities? Or are you a little scared and not sure kind of what's going to happen and if you can hang on financially and so on and so forth? So I think, number one, we need to take inventory of where you're at. And uh, Ronnie, I mean, your thoughts on that? So... That is a very interesting perspective and nothing of what you said is wrong at all. I actually believe you're right. There are probably two types of notaries, but I want to comment and add on top of that, kind of like an icing on the cake sure. so that we don't have to just talk about confidence and fear because there are people who fall into the middle. So the first thing that I want to tell you is that 
and, and it's great that we're talking on notary business talk today with the notary entrepreneur because the first thing that i want to remind everybody listening and to all of our notary stars that will watch the replay is that you are a business owner and that this is normal for businesses to go through money's like water right sometimes it rains and pours and then sometimes it doesn't there are a lot of notaries that were brought into this industry during the pandemic because they lost their job and because of youtube channels where people are going you make six figures and all of these things and no i'm not pinpointing any particular person because a lot of people use that term nowadays and they try to pull people into an industry so that they can make money and i've take great pride in not saying how much money someone's going to make just if you do it right you'll always make money so what i want to point out to people is no matter if you're on the confident side or the fearful side because you can be confident and still not be getting the business right and you can be fearful and getting the business it just we don't know how the cards are going to fall sometimes so what i want to remind notaries right now is that notaries are needed for a lot more than loan signings and we have to stop looking at this as a loan signing industry and go back to being the mobile notary industry at this moment. So we, we need to remember, and I always say that there's two hats, but I wanna talk about a third hat today. So our first hat is the notary. Like in order to do anything in this industry is we have to be a notary and we have to do that right. We have to know our state laws. Um, then we have the loan signing agent hat where we act as a notary, but we also administer the documents, make sure the sign, sign, signing understands. And yes, we make, more money for that but you can also make money with just the notary hat i know plenty of notaries throughout this entire country who only focus on general notary work right. and i think sometimes people were brought into this industry thinking that they have to do loan signings only and that's not true uh you know at unlimited ink i put a hyper focus on arizona because that's where we're located and i also have you know today i got a brand new client out of florida because i built landing pages and someone booked a seller signing through our uh, general booking and paid up front. It was a title company. And then we call them and say, hey, you know, you can get 30 days to pay. We win clients that way all the time. Being able to market your business is another thing, but that comes from being an entrepreneur. So we have a third hat, right? All this time I've said the notary hat, the loan signing agent hat, but you have to remember the hat in the middle is the entrepreneur. And we're not bound to just loan signings. We're, we have apostills that are available. Judy Lawrence teaches those trust and wills those are never going away and those are great clients because those are clients with money i hate to say it but if you're creating a trust or a family trust you got money it means you're trying to protect your assets um and those those attorneys are looking for business and, you know in my marketing course i'm looking um not looking we are teaching our marketing students on how to go after attorneys that do these things and let them know that they don't even need a brick and mortar anymore. They, you could help them through Zoom and be there to for them to administer and you could sign all the documents. We are evolving as an industry right now. Ron's coming up. I know you're in California um, and we'll talk about that at the end of the episode, but Ron's coming up. If you're in a Ron state, there are so many things that you can do to use technology to expand your business. Unlimited Inc. is definitely doing that. But I don't want to discourage notaries and say, and not that you did, Abraham, but I don't want to discourage notaries and say there's two types of, you know, uh, people in the world because there's a lot of people in between and I feel sorry for those that were brought in and said this is going to be this way forever because when we hire someone at Unlimited Inc we always say real estate is feast or famine but Unlimited Inc is a signing agency and I want to give one example and then I'm going to shut up and kind of <laughs> let you uh, go on it one of my well, favorite signing agencies in the country to work for and if they send me anything to this day I will take it because I think they're amazing and it's superior notary services. And what I love about superior notary services is they're out of Texas. They gave me tons of business over the years out of uh, Texas to Arizona. I know that they work nationwide. They're great with marketing. Uh, I would love to become friends with them one day. So if you're watching from superior notary services, hi, it's little Riley. Um, but I would, I would, I think they do great at marketing, but they don't survive off of just loan signings. They're a true notary signing agency like Unlimited Inc. We cater to the general public. We do trust signings. We work with attorneys, personal injury attorneys. We do um, debt settlements. We do uh, with the right kind of companies, by the way. Um, we do uh, loan signings. You know, our 150 to 200 client base is not just title and escrow, although it is the predominant part. 
But since the pandemic uh, has ended and we are now down to, I think we're about a thousand dollars off in profit. And last year we made uh, every month about a thousand to two thousand dollars off every month. Last year, you know, not to talk about too much money, I don't have it because we pay people. But in revenue, bringing in was about four point five million. And this year we're only a thousand or two thousand dollars off with the same amount of revenue because we are diversified. And right. so I think it's really important, especially with what we're going to talk about tonight, is for notaries to understand that, you know, the industry is not dead. You just may not be squeezing the blood out of the term turnip, so to speak. Sure. And so I don't want people to think, you know, well, if I'm afraid I should go, because I've seen notaries also that go. But one of my phone conversations before this call was I'm now adding apostilles and I'm going to take Judy Lawrence's training because I'm near one of my Secretary of State's offices and I know I can do this. And they're adding more services. So there's still things that can be done, especially if you're brand new and you just thought it was going to rain sightings all the time because it was when the interest rates were lower. That's not true. And, and, and somebody who owns a business is going to learn to in, implement more services. And we do that at Notary SARS. There's all other, other trainers out there that can help you with specifics. But I don't want anybody to think like there's just two mentalities. I'm either going to be confident and walk the path or I'm going to be unconfident and not walk the path. I'd like for them to see that what the path is, you know, if you, you, you no matter if you're fearful or confident, what that path is. So I, I sorry to go off on a tangent, but I just couldn't let it go without adding that. So I wanted to put some frosting on that as well, because we are all confident and fearful at the same time. At least I am anyway. Yeah, no, and, th and that's kind of, I, I was going to segue into the fact that if you are kind of what you just described as someone who, you know, got into this industry because under the wrong pretense, right, you were told that this was going to be the way it was going to be forever and ever uh, to kingdom come. And, and it was always going to be busy and you were always going to make six figures. And now you might be a little disappointed. You may be a little bummed out. What we're going to talk about today, I think, is going to help you sort of view yourself and what you are capable of, but you need to have a plan. You need to be able to identify where you're at, what you want moving forward, and then how to get it. And this is where resources like Notary Stars and this podcast will help you achieve that. So if you are scared, if you are afraid, if you're not sure, if you're wondering, if you're questioning, but, but that's why we're here. I think that's why we're here to have this conversation, Ronnie. And I think you would agree that... Uh, uh, we want to be the guiding light in the darkness. Would you agree with me on that? I agree with you on that. <laughs> okay, man. I feel extra traumatic today for some reason. I'm not sure why. Um, so what do we want, right? So now that we identified where we're at, what is it that we want to achieve, right? The next question is, do we want more loan signings? Or like Ronnie just described, do we want to maybe branch out into different areas of of the notary industry? Do we want to get more general notary work? Do we want to target escrow offices? Uh, I'm sorry, attorneys. Do we want to target hospitals or nursing homes? Do we want to learn how to do apostilles? Do we want to maybe become a wedding officiant? There are so many different ways that we can expand as notaries. But the question is, do you have the clarity? Do you understand what it is? First of all, that's available. And number two, what it is you specifically want to do moving forward because what you want is going to completely dictate how you do it and how you go out there and get it. So number two, I think is being clear about what it is exactly that you want. And I, I, we're going to talk about this at the end of the show, but Ronnie and I uh, are going to be uh, speakers at this uh, virtual summit. We'll give you more information at the end. And my talk is going to be on how to build a recession proof notary business. And essentially it's going to be talking about the different ways you can diversify your your entrepreneur efforts so that you're not affected by a, a market downturn like in the real estate market. But we'll talk about that a little later. So what do you want to do and how do you get it? So Ronnie has a, a method and, uh, to sort of structure and plan out and, and set goals called the SMART method. And uh, Ronnie, you want to kind of talk a little bit about how you implement that, uh, particularly as a notary public? Yes. Um, so. First of all, um, I want to say one thing before we get started on that topic sure. is another thing as an entrepreneur is you have to have things in your back pocket that you can pull out. So for instance, I still have a Lyft and Uber sticker on my car. 
I have not driven Lyft or Uber in six years, but I keep my accounts current. Um, during the holidays, I still take Rover clients and my claim to fame is I paid for half of my wedding by cashing in my Rover fees, true story. Um, and I had just saved it in an account, never cashed it in until it was time. And then I, I, you know, I love pets. And so I live in a large community and I go out and walk dogs for everybody in the neighborhood on my lunch break and uh, after work. As an entrepreneur, it's not about hanging up. Sometimes it's about filling in the gaps. You know, if you, if you, if you live in a large community and you can walk dogs or things, I mean, some of my clients pay me $30 an hour. I'm not kidding you for to go play with their puppy and I can be on the phone while I'm playing with the puppy. They just, the puppy needs, you know, attention, food, all of those things and they're on vacation and they just need someone to come in and take care of it. Um, so there, there's Amazon flex, there's, you know, other things that you can do. Um, those are my three that I go to because Arizona is one of the hubs for Amazon. You may not be able to do it, but uh, door dashing is another and you know door dashing takes you into businesses during during the day and i have no shame of putting business cards under a door while i go in for anything else um you know same thing with lyft you can make make clients out of out of lyft uh rides so sometimes in the beginning and people ask me like why do you continue to do these things or have these things why do you have a lyft sticker on your car like you own a multi-million dollar company and i say because I know what it was like starting out. And I know that at any moment I may have to go backwards. And as a business owner, you really kind of have to be prepared to bring in income other ways. I'm very fortunate that I don't have to, but I will tell you that if tomorrow I had to be out driving a lift car, if it was the difference between keeping the lights on and turning them off, I would be driving lift. And I do see a lot of times people go, I'm only doing this, this is all I'm focusing on. And I think sometimes you have to understand when you have to focus on two things or maybe three things just for the time being to get you through. Uh, but getting into the, the SMART goals, I wrote this question and it says, you know, you may find yourself looking around wondering if your business is going to make it. And there are only three answers to this question. That is yes, no, and maybe. And no matter where you are in this, I'm hoping that this episode will help turn things around for you. And it's okay if you've never goal set before. And I'll tell you, I'm one of the kids that were too school for cool. Um, I was always late to classes in high school. I didn't get myself together until I was in college and it took me eight years to get that degree because I'm not the brightest light on the Christmas tree, although I thought I was. Um, I like to hang out at the money back down by Troop uh, County High School and smoke cigarettes before the bell rang to get in. And then it was such a long walk and you were a smoker. so. You were always late because you didn't know how to run the class uh, from that distance. Um, so if you're somewhere that thinks, oh, you know, this is cheesy. This is just another one of those traps. It's really not. This is things that large companies do. And part of my evolution of becoming a business owner is I got to work with Discovery Communications at the High Museum of Art uh, for, I think I was there for quite a few years, it was about six. And one of the first, the first year I was with, I was with this touring company and you know it was kind of chaotic and then but it was a good company and then discovery communications bought that company and said you're now not an employee of the high you're now an employee of discovery and that's where i got a lot of the money to pay for my education which was great and then the very first thing like on january uh it was actually december which is why we're doing it in this month my boss calls me from california i'm working in georgia at the time and she says we need to set goals and I'm like, goals. And she was like, I need you to tell me what you're planning on doing for this company within the next year. And she had to actually approve my goals or deny me or whatever. Now, as a business owner, you don't get that luxury of having someone to tell you, are these good goals? Right. You have to be kind of intelligent enough to say, this is a good goal or not. And I'm not the most intelligent guy on the planet. So I'm not saying you have to be intelligent enough. But this model called the SMART model, which I didn't come up with, you can Google this, it's out there. It's over. Uh, there's a method to kind of creating your goal. And are you ready for me to kind of go through that method, Abraham? Yeah, I think we should go down each, each kind of each, uh, each letter here and kind of talk about it. Okay, so it's an acronym, um, which means each letter stands for something. And the first rule is to be specific. 
And that is to write down specific goals that you would like to attain within the next quarter of business. I say within the quarter because you, in our industry, you kind of need to kind of reassess every quarter. And I say, don't hold back on this. Um, get, get in there, especially if this is your first time ever setting goals, brainstorm and, and, real, and kind of like you were talking about, state what you want. And I'm not trying to get all spiritual or the secret, but that stuff works as well. But you want to write down what are you trying to accomplish? If you've never written down a goal for a notary business before, let this be your first time and come join us on the 21st, which we'll talk about as well, because we're going to get really into this and come up with some really great ideas for goals. But you want to write down your goals. What are your personal goals for your business? Okay, and be specific. Now, the next thing is, is that it's called measurable. Well, hold on. Before we move, before we move okay. on, let's, let's get let's talk about what that means re really, because I think there there should be a sort of sweet spot when we when it comes to 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 uh, to uh, being specific about, about what we want, right? Let's just say I call it the A B uh, tension. It's A is where you're at now, realistically, you know, not wishful thinking where you wish you were, but where you realistically are, and B where you want to be in the next month two, three months if, if that's how you want to set the goals and and pick a goal that's not i mean the title of the show is realistic goals i'm not saying cut your short self short here but i'm also don't say don't say i mean if you've only if you're only doing 10 signings a month and you want to your goal is to do a thousand in a month in in three months i mean that's kind of a little far-fetched so i think when we when we talk about specifically what it is we want to achieve as the measurable specific goal, I think it has to be realistic enough where you believe you can actually achieve it, but still st stretched out enough where it's challenging, where it's still gonna, you know, make you feel good when you actually achieve it. And finding that little sweet spot is, is not the easiest thing, but I think it's important. And I mean, what are some examples of 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 um of, of some goals that a notary might, might want to consider um, to be specific on Ronnie. Well, you were just talking about the number of signings. So this is actually one of the examples in the blog that'll go out with this podcast. Okay. Um, so let's just say you're doing 20 to 30 signings a month right now, and your goal is 50 to 60 per month. Okay. Um, that's a realistic goal. Like you can double your business. I mean, anybody can double your business. Now, if you're trying to triple your business, you may want to wait till you can double your business, right? <laughs> and then your your goal, you might look at your goal after you've achieved it and see how hard it was and go, I think I can triple it, but I can't double it. So you want to be realistic with yourself. I mean, 50 to 60 signings per month, that's nothing. I mean, that was an average month for me. Um, when I was out in the field, it was 100 plus. Uh, and I had goals back then. So wherever you are, if you're at five signings, you know, start with a realistic goal of I need 15 or I need 20. It's going to give you propelled motivation. But if you say I want to do 100 a month, there's so much road between five and 100 that you have to cover. So and, and I don't want to get too much more into that because we have the rest of this topic will explain it. Um, you just want to be realistic with yourself and a realistic goal would be, you know, if you're on the smaller end doubling, but if you're on the higher end, you know, adding 25 or getting a direct client or wherever you are, because remember, we're looking at where we are now and where we want to go, but being realistic about it and specific specific and and one size does not fit all uh, fit everyone guys i mean it could be an income goal let's just say you want to make an extra 500 dollars a month or maybe you want to start growing a, a local uh attract local business and maybe your goal in the next three months is to you know build a website and get listed on 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 google you know google places and maybe that's the direction you want to go in so uh, definitely take your time and in, in, in terms of what you specifically want to do because this is where you're going to spend the next three months working on. So, um, but anyhow, okay, let's let's move on to the next one, which is M for uh, measurable. What do we say about measurable, Ronnie? So all your goals must be measurable, um, and what that means is once you've committed to a goal, you will need to write down how you will accomplish it, right? And a, a good example of knowing when your goal is achieved is did you come close to your goal? 
Um, when will you assess your goal? Um, how will it be assessed? So you'll, you'll need to give yourself a time limit in order to kind of measure that goal. And your measurement will be how close to the goal did you come? And there's nothing wrong with resetting a goal and saying, I'm going to try this again because I got close but didn't do it, uh, or reassessing a goal. But you need to be have, if it's not measurable, so let's say you say, I want to do 1,000 signings a month, which no notary can do unless you're a signing agency, um, then it's immeasurable. So if you can't measure it, there's your first fail safe to say this goal is not realistic. And I think another way of looking at measurement is saying, okay, if I want to get an extra 30 signings a month, uh, how do I do that? Right. And how, and measure and sort of reverse engineering that process saying, well, what do I have to do to achieve that goal? Well, you may need to visit 10 escrow offices a week, or you may have to send, you know, some marketing material or call on, signing companies and introduce yourself. I mean, uh, measuring really, it, it can be even on uh, to the level of the kind of activity you would have to do to be able to achieve what you want to achieve uh, and then measuring it weekly. Did I do the things I said I had to do to be able to achieve this goal? Did I, uh, did I do this, the 10 knocking on escrow officers doors and, and uh, uh, so I, I, that's how I kind of see uh, measurement in terms of measuring your progress, measuring your activity, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, good. Anything else you want to add to that, Ronnie? No, I'm excited about the next part. Yes, yes. And then the next one is A for attainable. Uh, talk to us about that, uh, Ronnie. Well, the first thing I want to say is that any realistic goal is attainable, okay? Um, but your, your goals... Uh, you may need to break them into smaller steps. So let's say that your goal is 100 signings per month, right? You may need to break that into smaller steps and ask yourself, well, how am I gonna get to 100? And I'll tell you, coming from owning a signing agency, the idea that you're gonna get 100 signings out of one title company is really small. Some escrow companies have hundreds, but then they're gonna need a signing agency. Some of them have 15 files a month, and you may be the best notary for that, but then you're going to need more clients. Right. And so you're going to need to find how many title companies can you service without ticking any of the other ones off that need their own little special notary to always be available or a handful of them. And then how many signing services are you going to put into there or how many hours are you going to drive lift or whatever you need to do to meet your financial goals. So you may need to break your goals into more attainable steps in order to get there. And that's okay. When I first started, you know, all of this, um, I remember, um, and I, it's so funny, I actually got sent a picture. Let me see if I can show this on the screen for those that are watching the replay of this. Let's see if I can actually get it. I have a picture from the day I was told about the notary industry. Um, and I will tell you, my life changed, but there's a there's a reason to this. So I was sitting at the bar that I worked at. Okay. Let's see. This was, this was now this is when you were in Hollywood, LA? Yeah. I don't know if you can see that, but that night, that oh, one yeah. next to me is the one yeah. that I talk about all the time who taught me how to do this. She ran a title company and was also a signing agent outside. And I became her first notary to do work with her outside of herself and then i went on to start all of this this is over 12 years ago um i want to make sure where we get back on this so i set goals for myself every month and i didn't even realize i was doing it you know i got to like 25 signings and then i said oh well i'd like to do this and there's a point in notary stars where you you'll you'll go back and you'll hear my life started being started looking like this. If I wanted a new car, how many more signings a month did I have to make? <laughs> so I don't speak to people any longer in you know how long will it be? Or even at Unlimited Inc. now, my my life has become one big goal from doing this. Now when people say, Oh, can you attend this conference? I look at the budget and I think 
how many more signings would Unlimited Inc. need to get out of this in order to justify paying for this conference and how many clients will we get? My whole life has become a goal now. <laughs> and so, but sometimes you have to break those up in the beginning of how much, uh, you, how can you really get there? And that's the part that's the part about being attainable is if you say you want 100 signings a month, then how do you get to them? Right. If you want 200 signings a month, then you're going to have to say, how do I get them? But how much help will I need to do that? Because there's no way one notary, unless you're sitting in house that signing all day long could do 200 signings a month. Right. It's just not humanly possible to drive around the city like that, especially in major cities or in rural areas. So there is no sweet spot for that. I've, I think the most I've ever seen a notary do is about 120 a month. That's a, truly a mobile notary. Um, so you have to have obtainable goals. And then, you know, one thing that's not on this, and I'd love to bring this out now is knowing when it's time for you to cross that threshold. If you want more, when are you going to become a signing agency? What is your next goal after that? And Sometimes people say, Ronnie, why are you teaching people to become notary signing agencies? And I'm like, I would love colleagues or competition. Either one's fine for me. Um, I would love more people to play in the sandbox with. And so if that is your goal, if your goal is 500 signings because your financial goals are bigger, then how do you get there? What are the steps to take? And you can obtain that goal too. You don't have to think just about yourself. You can think about all the people around you and set goals for what you want to become as well. Um, that goes back to the first goal is be specific, be honest with yourself. What are you trying to achieve? The attainability part is breaking it up to you so you can actually get there. Yeah. And to speak about the signing agency, I mean, you could be a small signing agency with five notaries that you work with and, 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 and be happy with that. But the, the hard that's exactly how unlimited ink started, by the way, not to cut you off. That's exactly how Unlimited Inc. started. We started with eight notaries who divided the city like a piece of pie. And if it was in your area, you got first dibs on it. And then the next two notaries in that area could do it because we divided it like a literally like a piece of pie. Like this one lives here. This one lives here. This one lives here. This one lives here. And it was like a pie. And they would, we worked together on a little platform called Boxer. And we'd be like, this order just came in and it's in your area, but I don't see you you know, responding to it, can you take it? And that's really the truly the birth of Unlimited Inc. was, you know, working with eight notaries yeah. that made 10,000 plus a month dividing business from one big client. Right. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be Unlimited Inc. level signing agency. It reminds me of uh, uh, one of the things I, I do is I officiate weddings and I officiate jail weddings. And, uh, and, uh, and there's different, uh, weddings and uh, jails in the area that I work in. Well, the documents, there's documents that have to be notarized. It's how I got into jail weddings. Cause there's a notary component to jail weddings and the notary can't be the same person that's officiating the wedding. So anytime I do one of these, I have to have uh, a notary outside of me notarize a, a document that's required in, in the process. And so there's this, this little group, this is owned by this lady uh, out in Marietta, California, and she uh, she's kind of done what you just said, right? And this is this is why it's so cool what we do because there's so many different variations and angles and different flavors that you can build and create your business the way you want to build it. But her thing is she had like five or six notaries that worked under her, and she mainly focused on jail notary stuff, just like a bail bonds office. They just did jail notaries, and if she wasn't available, she had her notaries, and it was like a little mini signing agency just serving the legal and jail because uh, there's a big courthouse and everything out there. And I just thought it was really interesting how she picked such a niche market, but she had notaries working under her just like a signing agency, just like you said. So, um, But yeah, the most important thing is knowing what you want to do. And that's the thing is there's so many opportunities, so many. I mean, loan signings is just the tip of the iceberg. There's so many different ways you can get creative and make a business in a way that no one's ever done before and capitalize on, on your ingenuity, but you need to know. Cause once you know what you want to do, Ronnie, it's the how to is pretty easy. I mean, there's so many people out there like you, like me who can teach you the how mm -hmm. 
it's, it's knowing what, what it is that you want. And, and, and then once you have that, and, and trust me, it, it's not as easy as it sounds knowing what you want to do. And that clarity is huge. I think the rest of it actually is pretty easy once you, once you really think about it. So uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, anything else on, on attainable Ronnie that you want to talk about? No. And I just want to, I want to let you know, we've been talking for an hour and 30 minutes. So we want to kind of wrap it up with these last two. Um, I don't want to rush anybody off, but I, I'm pretty sure people will start falling off about an hour and a half into this. I've had, I've been, I've been enjoying this, but I know us, we can continue to talk, 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 talk. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, so R is relevant, right? Let's, let's, let's go through that one real quick. This one's actually pretty easy. Um, does your goal make sense for your business? If it doesn't, then it shouldn't be a part of your goal. So clarity, this is going back to clarity, right? Right. That's probably the divining factor. If, if this goal is, you know, we be specific and we start saying we want these things. And if your goal says, I want to make $150,000. And then you look at how many signings it would take to make that. And you know, in your area, it doesn't have that many. You're going to have to readjust your goal to get to the first part, right? So is it relevant? Can it actually happen? Will it, does it make sense for your business model? Are you going to take every signing that comes available? Are you willing to go out and do general notary work? Are you willing to add in new services? If you're not, then it's not relevant. It's not going to work for you. So you have to ask yourself, is it relevant? Absolutely. And I have a perfect story for this real quick. I had a, a, a notary reach out to me to do a coaching call and she wanted to know how to do jail weddings she wanted to learn how to do gel weddings in San Diego County. Well, I was glad to teach her, but once I did a little research, it turns out San Diego County does not allow notaries to do, or individuals uh, who are ordained officiants to perform wedding ceremonies in San Diego County. They have six, and I count them, six specific notaries that are allowed. They have a monopoly on being able to perform wedding ceremonies in San Diego County. So here's this lady ready to pay me for an hour of coaching to teach her how to do wedding ceremonies in a county which wouldn't even allow her to do wedding ceremonies. That would be irrelevant if 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 that so that there's there's a relevance right it would be irrelevant for her to learn how to do wedding jail weddings if she can't even perform them in her well this is a great plug for what we're going to talk about later so <laughs> if you're thinking about getting off this call right now uh, when you're watching the replay or listening to the podcast stick around because we're going to tell you how you can make a difference and stop a monopoly but all right let's keep going on to the next subject and the last one i think we've already discussed but it's being timely right and uh um I think of that as just making sure you have a deadline and you kind of hold yourself to a certain um, time frame. But how would you describe timely? So when I worked with Discover, we had to do quarterly goals and they would start a month before the end of the quarter and you had to put in your goals and then your boss would assess them and they would be approved or you would have to go through a resubmission again. And so, and my boss now I know she was probably getting pressure from her boss to say, did you get all your, you know, people that you manage to get you their goals and then review them. And cause sometimes she'd be like, come on, Ronnie, did you get your goals? And I'd be like, I don't know what I want to do. And, you know, I was in my twenties, um, but now I'm in my forties and I understand. Um, but you need to be as a business owner and an entrepreneur, you do need to set things on your calendar. There are things on my calendar that just say, review your goals. And I have goals for my business. I have goals for notary stars. I have goals for unlimited ink and I have personal goals. And I have a time where I sit down and review those goals. I schedule time, no matter what, that's what I'm doing. That is my planning period or my time. And it comes quarterly and I don't turn on my phone. I don't turn on anything. I turn on the computer and I look with my goals and I write down, I actually do it old school. I write it down. Um, I'm, you know, as a former author and poet, I'm a big fan of the pen. Um, but uh, you, you need to find time to sit down with your goals and 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 work with them and review them. And so timely. You need to set deadlines, but those need to deadlines need to be times that you're reviewing them. So if you let's say you set your goals in December for the first quarter of 2023, you probably want to review your goals in January, February, uh, probably way around February, because you're going to start working on them January 1st come hell or high water, or is that's the way it should be. 
And then you're going to need to review again by the end of March. And you're going to be setting goals for the next quarter in March. Okay, because we have three quarters, four quarters, three months apiece, three months each. Right. That's how we got 12 months, if you don't know math. Yeah. <laughs> So five out of four people are terrible at math. I'm one of them, Ronnie. I'm five of them. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and, and, and the way, I, and I'll tell you, I, I'm a little different than you, Ronnie. And I gotta, I, I want to kind of give my two cents real quick because I think it's interesting to see both perspectives. I'm more of a visual guy. So I like drawing circles and arrows pointing to my goals. Uh, and I have so sort of this, I, I have this A to B mindset. It's always A to B. Where am I and where do I want to be in the next six weeks? And my goals are one to two goals at a time. And I'm so laser guided and focused on just these short term goals, whereas I'm like consumed on just achieving that one or two goal in the short six weeks that I have. And that's how I track progress, right? Because A to B, and if I once I achieve that B, and if I do it well, if, if I plan it right, if I if the goal was realistic enough, but tough enough that I, you know, that would push me a little bit. Ideally, I would get to the B. That B becomes my new A, and now I set a new B that I have to out, go out and reach. And it's like stepping one step at a time, right? It's it's a, uh, it's so yeah. And it's that I'm constantly with that tension of, oh, I got four weeks left to achieve these two things that I said I was going to achieve in six weeks. And so, uh, a little different than 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 kind of how you do it, where you allocate time and stuff. But I think it's still achieving the same goal. Wouldn't you agree? I do. And I think it's okay to set long-term and short-term goals. You know, your method, and I, I actually work with you outside of this, so I understand kind of your method to your madness, so to speak, and it works for you. <laughs> um, for me, I usually have active about two to three short-term and long-term goals. Anything more than that, I think you get lost. Yeah. Um, and I would say long-term goals need to be part of your short-term goals, if that makes sense. Those short-term goals should be those steps you're taking toward your long-term goals. Yeah, it's breaking it up, breaking up the bigger goals into smaller goals. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely awesome! Wow, this is good stuff, guys. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I hope you're driving down in your. I hope you're driving in your car, going to your next appointments, enjoying this this interaction that Ronnie and I have. We're good friends outside of this, and I love the chemistry we have. I love the way we shoot ideas back and forth, and I'm hoping that you guys are getting value out of this because I know I do. I mean. Half the time I go into this, Ronnie, not really knowing exactly what's going to come out of these uh, get togethers that we have. And it's interesting how much we're able to pull out of each other. And uh, I really enjoy that dynamic. I don't know if you if you get that same experience that I have. but I do, too. I, you know, I have to, t I, you know, just to chime in on that. We do absolutely no prep work whatsoever. I mean, generally, the way our podcast works is I write the blog that we're intending to publish for Notary Stars. I send it to Abraham. He reads the blog. And then by the time he reads it, we're getting on to record. So he's literally only had time to just compose his own thoughts. And I think that's been a great dynamic for us because it really is two different mindsets in this industry coming together to kind of regurgitate both of our thoughts. And I think we have similar enough thoughts, but different enough perspectives on those thoughts that it just really works. So I, I've enjoyed this. This has been one of, one of the highlights of everything that we do. I love it. Yeah, same here. So let's talk about some events that are coming up, Ronnie. I know we got to do some some home some maintenance work here, and uh, we have a few events coming up. And I think the first event that's coming up uh, soon is the uh, this um, this event that you have with the Independent League of Notaries, which is going to be on December fifth, I believe. You want to tell us a little bit about that, uh, Ronnie? Sure, absolutely. In a nutshell, so it's actually the California League of Independent Notaries, CLIN for short. Um, we are presenting them on Notary Stars, which will be on December the 5th. <clears throat> you can go to uh, notarystars.com and actually click on the homepage and register for the event. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, I'll post a link and Abraham, I'll share it with you. Um, so this is actually a really important event. Um, it's time that notaries find a local or statewide community that's actually lobbying for their future. So if you want to get your fees raised in your state, you want to stop with the way that Ron's being done or um, help the legislation on Ron be, be beneficial for your favor. Because if you don't, while you're sleeping, companies like notarize.com are going to come in and take your business and give it to someone else who's willing to do it for 15 to $25. Um, we are looking to formulate a coalition throughout the country 
the California Independent League of uh, California League of Independent Notaries is probably the first that I've seen. They do know of other organizations that are out there. They'll be pointing us in the direction of those. But this is the event, no matter if you're a California notary or not, to attend because you're going to learn how to uh, control your future by lobbying for it with your state and or at least getting into a, a organization or formulating one that can fight for your future while you're out uh, doing your business. And I'll tell you, if we're all sleeping, it's going to happen faster than you think. So I want to make sure that we are uh, all tuned into that episode on the 5th. That's very interesting. And yeah, and unfortunately, we do live in a world where, you know, politicians and politics, whatever you believe in or stand for, uh, they have a lot of power, man. And, 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 and I think if, 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 if you care enough about your industry and your future, paying attention to this sort of stuff is really important. So uh, definitely tune into that, guys, December 5th. Uh, the link will be in the show notes. If so, if you're driving, please don't write this stuff down uh, or we're not giving the link yet, but it will be in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about not having access to that. The next event we're having is the regular notary stars unlimited that follows these podcasts related to the same topic. And that's going to be on December 21st. Uh, for those of the, who are brand new to this uh, uh, podcast and aren't sure what that is, could you uh, describe that please, Ronnie? Sure. So notary stars unlimited is a kind of uh, a hybrid between Unlimited Inc. and Notary Stars. It's free to the, any notary in the country. Um, you can get registered at notarystars.com forward slash unlimited. Uh, this is our last episode of the year. I am happy to say that we had over 1,800 notaries come through, uh, unique notaries sign up to attend every month uh, this year, plus the people that only attended one or two, but 1,800 notaries that have uniquely watched the entire 12 part series it was designed to be and you can watch it next year it's designed to be where you should be in your business every month so we have a january february march april may episode our episode in december happens to be about goal setting which is why we're doing this now um, and next year we have a new theme called we are stronger together now this makes our third installment if you are a notary of a certain age uh, we also have a series under the drop down on notary stars called primetime notaries with the late carol ray who was an asset to the notary community um, where we did an entire series with her called primetime notaries and we also did it with phyllis trainer out of uh, uh uh texas who owns texas notary public training academy hoping to get miss phyllis back in for uh some episodes soon we do stay in touch with her i love her to death and uh you know, these are episodes that are absolutely free, but next year our topic is we are stronger together. And this is what I'm talking about with this December 5th kickoff with uh, Clint. Um, we need to band together in this industry. We need to stop focusing on how much money we can make and start looking at our future and how to protect it. And Notary Stars, now that we've got all the training, all the marketing training, we are really looking at formulating groups throughout the entire country that have nothing to do with training, but our futures. And so, Next year, we're going to be focused on We're Stronger Together, but you can sign up for our very last episode for this year on December 4, uh, 21st. So thank you for letting me talk about that as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know we have one more thing to mention, which is the Level Up Notary Signing Agent Virtual Conference, which both you and I were invited to speak as, uh, as guest speakers. And that's going to happen on January 14th. Did you want to talk, talk a little bit about that event, uh, Ronnie? Or um... Well, you were talking about your topic. What are you going to be talking about there, Abraham? Yeah. So I think, uh, I mean, it's still sort of up in the air and and they're still waiting for us to sort of submit our our, uh, our topic. But I think the, the best thing I can add value to the people that are going to be attending, I think it's going to be a great event, uh, is going to how to build a recession-proof notary business. And, and what I mean by that is how to engineer a notary business that isn't a hundred percent reliant on the real estate market on loan signings. And, uh, when 2008, uh, the market in 2008 crashed, I, my whole income was coming from loan signings and I went from making a lot of money to zero money for a while. And at that point I realized that was very painful. I should not have all my eggs in one basket. And I began to diversify my, the, the kind of work that I do. And now I would say more than 50% of my income comes from outside of loan signings. And uh, so now that even though it's slowed down, my business is still producing 
uh, a pretty a good enough income uh, on a monthly basis where I'm not feeling it compared to someone who maybe just had loan signing as their only source of income. So I've been doing that for over 10, since 2008, where I've diversified my business and built it in a way that it's sort of uh, independent of real estate. And uh, uh, so I think I want to talk about that and kind of how to engineer a business that can provide that sort of uh, uh, that sort of security. So that's kind of what I'm going to talk about. And then you, Ronnie, you were talking about something with, uh, with the signing agencies, right? Yeah. So I'm really excited about my topic because I'm actually adding in a new course to my marketing level at notary stars. And this is going to kind of be my kickoff for this. Okay. So I'm implementing a, uh, into my marketing course, not only how to market your notary business, but if you want to become a signing agency, what are those steps and what are the processes? And I'm going to kick this off at this actual conference here. And my topic is, how a successful uh, notary can turn their business into a multi-million dollar signing agency. And I shouldn't say multi-million dollar. I'm going to start with million dollar because we start with <laughs> realistic goals. It's not that far of a jump, but I my topic will be how did I get from being a successful loan signing agent to a million dollar signing agency, went, which literally was like a snap of the fingers. Right. And so I want to talk about that and all the things I had to sacrifice and what comes with it, but what you should expect, all of those things that you'll need to navigate, hopefully in an hour or less, but you guys know me, sometimes they have to cut me off, they'll maybe yanking me off. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to this topic because I've actually strategically rolled out Notary Stars over the last four years being just focused on the training so I could build a really great notary tool for my own company self, you know, self uh self-serving and for my colleagues that hire our notary stars but then i added in the marketing because i really wanted to help the notary community because i know a lot of secrets but now i think i'm ready to start sharing some uh, somebody called it trade secrets one time and people asked me why are you going to be training notaries to become you know signing agencies and i actually say number one i'm getting a little bored not having any competitors and number two because <laughs> we are we're I'm I'm just going to say it. Yeah. We're kicking rear end and taking names. And so I'd love some competitors. And I'd also like to help those who are really serious about getting there, get there, because I would also love some colleagues. There is still enough business on the signing agency level for it to all go around. I won't ever be able to obtain it. And some of the companies that are out there need to get their rear ends kicked a little bit and go with people that might be a little bit more like minded about being a caring signing agency. So I'm definitely going to open that up this year and I, I look forward to kicking it off at this conference and the, you know we're not the only speakers that are going to be there you know there's Bill Soroka, Laura Bewer, Matt Miller will be there from also from the event there's Judy Lawrence is going to be there this is going to be a really great event uh, and I don't I don't think it's that expensive I haven't looked at the prices since we're you know not paying to attend we're speaking but um, yeah, I think I think it's on Everbright. I think it's like thirty four dollars for a whole day, and there's like over thirty speakers or twenty five speakers. Yeah, it's it's gonna be amazing. So, I look forward to um, I look forward to the event. It, it's it's coming up. Abraham, to wrap this up though, sure. I have an impromptu question that okay. that I hope you don't mind me putting on the spot. So, we are going to be starting state specific training on loan documents at notary stars and before anybody says laura b always does already does that yes she does she does state specific training not on loan documents but on training and we endorse her at notary stars and we will tell you to go to her we begged her to you know let us put her on the front page of notary stars and she has allowed it and we love her and she comes by but we are going to be doing state specific training throughout the country. We're starting with Florida, Arizona, and hopefully California. And you have actually been nominated by several notary stars to become the California notary expert to put in a training course for California. And I just wanna know if it could be a possibility because I've never mentioned this to you before. And uh, your name has been, not just behind the scenes with us, but from notaries, been one of those contenders and just want to know, is it a possibility? Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, thank you. I'm flattered. I had, I had no idea that, yeah, <laughs> that was even being considered. Uh, yeah, that would be fantastic. I think that is a great idea. I think it's, uh, uh, it's something that, that could really add a lot of values to notaries. Um, I, 
I think it's a great idea. I'm, I'm very interested. Yes, thank you. Of course. Okay, well, I'm going to be hounding you about it. All right. Uh, we are looking to get, you know, some state-specific document training. Okay. Uh, we, we do a blanket training for all notary signing agents throughout the country, uh, but we really want to zero in on each state, anything that might be a little different uh, for each signing agent. And it's something that it's time. And we are going to be partnering with people like your, yourself, notary experts in each state, and uh, guiding the process. But we are, you're definitely, your name has come up more than 50 times uh, for okay. it. And uh, so we'll be looking forward to seeing if you actually accept the offer. Well, it's super exciting. Yes, I would love to have a, a conversation about this uh, further. And uh, yeah, we'll see what goes, what, what goes on, uh, comes out of this. And uh, I guess we'll, we'll let you guys know in the audience what happens and definitely keep you guys uh, in the loop. Thank you. I'm very honored and uh, a, little, a little surprised, actually. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great. Well, hey, thank, uh, was there anything else we wanted to finish with uh, now that you made me blush, Ronnie? No, I think two hours of notary talk is probably good for anybody <laughs> listening. If you made it this far, God bless you. And uh, I, I think we, we can talk more about it on the 21st. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I, I, my feedback tells me that a lot of notaries actually enjoy this. A lot of notaries actually listen to this while they're driving, going to appointments, and it kind of keeps them company in a, in a very uh, flattering and uh, uh, nice way. So what I love that. about this show, because, you know, we do a lot of document training. What yeah. I love about this show is I could listen to this in the shower while I'm getting ready for work or driving to a signing, and it, you don't have to watch the screen. Whereas a lot of the training that we do, you need to be in front of your computer. This is actually refreshing because you're still learning things and you can think about them, but you don't have to actually physically watch it. You know, I film it for our YouTube channel so they can see our faces and things. You put it on a podcast replay, which is, you know, adults need multiple ways to get that information into their head. Um, but what I love about it is I could listen to this in the shower, or, which is, you know, the, the only time I ever get to listen to anything personal is in the shower because I turn on things I want to listen to, like books, audiobooks, all those things. Um, so there, there's definitely a, a an audience that will probably appreciate this a lot, no matter how long it is, because you can do those <laughs> things that you know. This one you could cook dinner and and listen to. Absolutely, yes, <laughs> I I agree with you 100, percent Ronnie. But uh, okay, well, for those of you who did stick through this whole podcast for almost two hours, we really appreciate you guys hanging in there. We hope you enjoyed our antics our stories and our uh, and our, uh, our chemistry here. And uh, until next time, guys, I hope you guys enjoy your week. Stay productive. Be safe. And until next time, take care. Bye now. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Notary Business Talk. To learn more about becoming a notary entrepreneur or to find out how Abraham can help you achieve your business goals, visit notarybusinesstalk.com.